we are now discussing the next structure that is stomach. We have seen the structure of esophagus which is a tube which starts from the base of pharynx and opens into the stomach. This tube esophagus it just acts as a passage to bring the food which we are swallowing into this structure that is stomach. Now, when we talk of stomach, we say that this esophagus has opened into this muscular bag-like structure. Stomach is obliquely placed below the diaphragm on slightly, on the right, uh, sorry, left-hand side. So, it is an obliquely placed structure. It's a distensible bag that is this stomach and it is divided into four parts. This bulging part which we see is known as the fundus. This part which is closer or more on the left hand side is known as this part is called the cardiac part. The main part is known as the body of the stomach and the lower part is known as the pyloric. So these are the four parts and if we draw this dotted line which represents the diaphragm, so it is just beneath the diaphragm and esophagus opens into this. It is slightly obliquely placed and it is slightly on the left hand side. This bulging part is known as the fundic part. This side which is on the left hand side closer to the heart or towards the heart that is known as the cardiac one. The main part is the body and the other part which is going to lead into small intestine will be called pyloric part. When we were talking about esophagus we said esophagus opens into the stomach that opening was called esophageal gastric opening and it is guarded by a sphincter. This sphincter was called cardiac sphincter or it is also known as esophageal gastric sphincter because it is at the junction of esophagus and stomach and normally gastric term is used for stomach. Now at the other end of the stomach where it is going to lead into the small intestine part. So this part which I have drawn with red is going to be the small intestine part. So here also there is a circular muscle which guards this opening and this is called the pyloric sphincter. That means the stomach at its two ends has two sphincters. When esophagus opens into it, the sphincter is cardiac sphincter. When stomach opens into small intestine, that is called pyloric sphincter. And these are the four parts of the stomach. If we talk of the histology of stomach, we have already discussed that it is made up of same four layers that is outer, serosa, then muscularis, then submucosa and the innermost is mucosa. We have already talked of the special type of muscular layer which is found in only stomach. In all the parts of elementary canal, outer muscular layer is longitudinal muscle, inner to it is circular. So in case of stomach, there is longitudinal layer, muscle layer. Then there is circular muscle layer and there is an oblique muscle layer. This is a unique feature of the muscularis part of the stomach. 
Only stomach has this muscular layer where the muscle fibers are oblique. The mucosa part, this part, has gastric glands. Mucosa has gastric glands. We will draw the structure of gastric glands and we will also see which all cells are present here and what their secretions are. This bag like structure here the digestion also takes place, the food is also stored and depending upon which type of food we ate or eat the duration for which it is going to stay in the stomach. For example, carbohydrate rich food car rich food it stays in the stomach stays in stomach for one to three hours maximum we can say in about one to two hours the stomach would get empty if the uh, food is rich in carbohydrates so let us write one to two if it is protein rich food, then it is going to stay in the stomach for about 3 to 4 hours. This is in hours. And if it is fat rich food, it is going to stay here for 4 to 6 hours. And that is why we feel that fullness in the stomach when we have consumed something which is fatty. So depending upon the diet, the stomach would get empty because carbohydrate digestion is going to be quickly done. Protein digestion takes time and stomach uh, fat digestion obviously is a very lengthy process. So the duration for which the food remains is totally dependent on what we have consumed. Now coming to the glands, gastric glands. If you are able to recall the structure, the histology part, we said that outermost is serosa then there is muscularis and if we are drawing the muscularis layer of stomach then we will draw this longitudinal then circular and then oblique layers after this would be submucosa and innermost is going to be the mucosa layer so mucosa layer has this gastric glands. So if we draw this one structure, this is actually the gastric gland, this one. So we are drawing this structure, only thing is we are drawing it upside down. We are drawing it like this. So these cells, actually these cells we should be drawing columnar so that we remember that the cells here are tall and columnar cells and this layer which we are drawing here is the mucosa layer and this structure is of gastric glands so gastric gland if we talk of gastric glands they are simple branched tubular glands simple branched tubular glands that means this mucosa here we have shown that infolding here we are just drawing it upside down it shows this kind of branching so it is a branched gland and the branching is not very complex so we are calling it simple branched gland and tube-like gland. Now the cells which are found here, we will use different colors and the shapes also to understand. Let us talk about these few cells here and we are changing the shape. These are actually the mucus cells or goblet cells and these goblet cells are on the surface also and inside also so at some places let us draw these goblet cells so that we are able to remember that they are found almost everywhere so these cells which we have drawn these are goblet cells 
and they secrete mucus. Secrete mucus. Where are they present mainly? On the upper surface, that is in the mucosa and in the gland part also. So all these cells which we are drawing here, these are actually the goblet cells. And so let us list the cells. The first cell, goblet cells. The second type of cells are here in the neck region mainly. They are large and these cells, if we have to draw, these are big cells and their secretions are poured here. Big cells. And they are the part of mucosa only in this gland region. These cells are called auxentic cells. We will write down what the secretions are. Let us first uh, write, draw all the cells. Then after this there would be many cells and again they are columnar cells. These cells which are here and in between again there would be some goblet cells which are going to secrete the mucus. These cells they are chief cells and on the lower side we find few more cells. Certain cells which are slightly triangular cells these are called Argentafil cells. Argentafil cells. And few more cells which are endocrine in nature. These cells which are endocrine in nature, they are known as G cells. One more type of cells which normally have a na narrow base and swollen at the top. They are known as stem cells or basal cells. Stem cells or basal cells. Now, the remaining areas are not empty. There are again few cells, few cells in the sense. There would be mucus cells, auxentic cells. So, this is all completely lined with cells. Because we wanted to specify cells, we made those ones first. So in gastric glands, the cells which are present, goblet cells, auxentic cells, third, chief cells, four, argentafin cells, five, G cells, G cells and six these basal cells. Few of these cells they have other names also. So now let us talk about those cells, their other names and their secretions.